what can we say about Season 7? On the positive note, this is a huge jump in quality from Season 6. Where Season 6 felt very self-contradictory, Season 7 does have its kind of paradoxes and contradictions, but they're not as tough or as outlandish as season six. And it does have a very intriguing beginning. Unfortunately, I don't think they do a good job of following up on the premise, but they lay out quite an intriguing set of ideas and concepts. We're getting a resolution finally, at least most of it, with Spike and Buffy, and that's pretty good. So now Spike isn't sold, and we're gonna deal with the consequences of him trying to be a genuine anti-hero, as opposed to before, where he was sort of play-acting being an anti-hero, but not really committed to that. So that was really intriguing. A lot of the character-focused episodes are actually pretty strong. The one on Anya that starts off in the first third, I thought was actually pretty excellent. And we don't give her a lot of attention. So that was pretty interesting. And we also have better character development with Willow, with Dawn. Dawn is not being just used as a damsel in distress. So there's a lot of good things, especially in the first third. We also get this intriguing episode called conversations with dead people where we get more backstory with Buffy and her high school years. So there's a lot of little things which are really, really well done in terms of where we think the season is going to go, but there's a lot of misdirection. Some of it is necessary because of who the antagonist is, and you can clearly see that we really need Amber Benson because when, quote, old people start appearing, there's a reason for it. It's not what people would think. People are not being resurrected. Something else is occurring. So that was very, very interesting. But we do feel the loss of certain cast members who do return and some of them who do not return. So that was a little strange. And there's a lot of production history that goes with that, which we're not going to get into right at the moment. But it would have been really nice if Amber showed up again like the other people. But for whatever reason, she does not appear. It's a lot of intriguing ideas in the first third. But now we got to get to the critical part of this, which is that although there are really interesting ideas when we think them through. They don't add up very much, at least with the later half of the season. And it's legitimate in the first half, and that's what I'm really reviewing here, that those don't affect the score on that level. So the beginning part of Buffy is actually really, really good, and the first episode alone is incredible. Lessons is incredibly scary. It gives us really great character development. We also get a lot of more in terms of like how the world of Sunnydale has moved on because now they have a new high school which if we forgot was blown up in season three right when they were battling the mayor so there's a lot of neat little details about how the world and characters have moved on and shifted a lot of people think that Clem and Buffy being friends is a big plot hole but I don't see that I would see that as fairly normal within the months when Spike was absent that they would talk to one another and perhaps get to know each other. So there's a lot of little things that you can enjoy and smile at in terms of how the characters are and the world is growing and how it now fits together in this much more mature atmosphere because everyone's grown up. And that's one of the things which you find really interesting about Season 7 is them kind of looping back and trying to really come full circle with the early years of Buffy in these later years. So I think most of that was well done especially that early episode featuring Casey. A lot of people may be puzzled as to what does that mean? Well, Casey is essentially a mythological figure, Cassandra. And Cassandra was basically condemned to tell the truth but not be believed. And so she says things that will happen and are true. And with Casey, she does that. She gives us kind of intuition of what will happen in the future. However, nobody believes her. And I thought that was really well done. And especially the dialogue where she says, she will die. It's not that she wants to die, but that she has to die in terms of predestiny. That was an incredibly strong episode, even if the quote-unquote antagonist was actually pretty weak and pretty silly. Finally, these are some of the best-looking Buffy episodes. I know a lot of people kind of denigrate that in terms of how Buffy looks to us visually, but it's pretty astonishing, especially after we get the contrast with the first couple of seasons where they just didn't have the money and the technology was very, very crude with the special effects and the cameras. This is an insanely good looking season and I can just sit back and just enjoy the cinematography and they do a really, really good job on just visualizing Buffy and visualizing the characters. However, when the writers finally have to reveal their hand and tell us, well, what exactly is the antagonist? Because we get a lot of teasing at first, so we're a little puzzled as to, well, is Spike insane? Is this sort of an old enemy coming back? And... It is an old enemy, but it's not what we think it is, and it's not who we think it is, because when the antagonist is revealed, there's a lot of problems. There's internal problems that the character does not seem to be consistent, and then there's further problems that, well, initially it seems to present a really, really interesting physical threat to Buffy, 
but then it doesn't. And we're not told why it doesn't, it just doesn't. So we have a very, very strong first third in the first seven episodes, and then a very intriguing kind of trilogy of episodes where you sort of see Buffy facing a very visible and very powerful threat. But then it's kind of just cut off. And I don't mean to exaggerate it, it's just, it just stops. The threat just pauses for whatever reason, and we try to get to know new characters. And that's fine to some extent. Again, no TV program and no film and no novel has to follow a preset course. That's fine. You know, any story can follow its own logic, and I don't disagree with that to some extent. But there are things that really don't go with the canon of the earlier seasons. And certainly the way we're led to believe this is how this thing operates. This can't be right. At least in terms of what we see, in terms of the dream sequences, in terms of how this thing appears to us. It's a little confusing as to what we're supposed to think of the antagonist. And I'm not clear what even the major theme is of this season. It seems to be we're going from kind of Buffy being the only or so prophetized kind of savior to it's going to be a collective salvation. And there's an affirmation of women having power. But that's been true of the show in other seasons. So it's unclear if they're just revisiting an old theme or which is much more the case, which it seems that they're is a lot of great writing this season, but also a lot of lazy writing. The problem with season six is the lazy writing was really, really strong and extreme, and we're not going to revisit the seeing red controversy here, but it didn't feel like we were seeing our characters. Now, with season seven, we do get a lot of the old characters and the old humor. I thought the humor especially really got back into some of the best of Buffy, but it's not quite at the level of seasons three, four, and five, where those were very mixed. They had some good episodes and some bad episodes. There was kind of solidity to the theme. You can still argue, well, the politics and as well as what the commentaries were saying were pretty terrible, and that's true. There was at least thematically a much more consistent through line. And here, I didn't really quite sense what the consistency was supposed to be about. I'm still not clear examining the episodes what we're supposed to make of them, aside from, okay, there are great performances, there's great special effects. And there's some interesting twists, some interesting callbacks, but beyond that, the substance is a little unclear. Kind of mixed record, but a huge improvement over Season 6. I'm going to give Season 7 a 7.5. Thank you for listening.